What's up, everyone? Welcome to Unmasking Humanity 21 Questions with Joshua T. Berglund. I'm your host, Joshua. Thank you so much for being here. Wow. Uh, we've done two episodes so far, and both episodes were absolutely extraordinary. Every answer to every question has been shocking and different and new, and I, mean, I, I love it. I am this is of all the broadcasts I've done, this has been my favorite format because I believe that the questions are just getting the most out of the guests. It's really showcasing all that they're about and showing how well-rounded and diverse and how deep and how much depth they have. And it's incredible. And today, well, today for me is probably one of the more special broadcasts I've ever had the opportunity to do. And the reason why, one, I don't really interview people I know that much. Um, I, for whatever reason, in my in the years I've been doing this, I have never really gravitated towards wanting to interview people I knew. Uh, but with 21 questions, it's it's allowing me to do that in a little bit more comfortable way, but also is allowing me to get to know the people I already know. And so that makes the questions even more challenging for me to come up with because I want to ask things that I may not know, but also that I feel that you would find interesting. Today's guest, Jessica Lynn Toft, is somebody that I know. I've known for several years now. Um, I've been able to see behind the scenes up close. I've been able to see the work that she does in communities, uh, the work she does for the underserved, the sacrifices she makes for those that suffer with mental uniquenesses, as I prefer to call. Um, she's absolutely incredible. And her heart for people, her heart for the world is sincere it's powerful it's just wow because it's you know it's very rare when you get to do an introduction and i may start butchering this a little bit because it's hard to hold back the emotion because i know how incredible jessica is i've seen her work with people that you know that just and just change their whole perspective on life in a moment i've seen her go out of her way to fight for people that no one would fight for it's, she's an incredible human being, and one of the things that she's doing right now in virtual reality is extraordinary because of the accessibility, the 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 inclusion aspect, the the opportunities that's going to create for the underserved, for people that normally don't have access to not just technologies, but also education and things that are going to prepare them for the future. And she's the forerunner for it. I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable. So these questions today are going to allow you to get to know Jessica in a very unique way. You're going to get to know her, her mission, what she's all about. And really, this is going to be fun. Um, I love these questions because, again, I'm going to learn things about Jessica that I didn't know. And I've known her for almost five years now. And uh, But this is going to be awesome. It's a lot of fun. Jessica is a ray of sunshine, but she's also she's a fearless warrior for truth and for the underserved and for people that, again, normally don't have access to some of the things that we take for granted. So anyway, I like I said, I've seen firsthand behind the scenes how awesome she is. And now, for those of you who don't know Jessica, you're about to find out how incredible and extraordinary she is. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a very special human being, Jessica Lynn Toft to Unmasking Humanity, 21 questions with Joshua T. Berglund. Welcome to Unmasking Humanity, 21 questions with Joshua T. Berglund. Today, I am so excited to introduce to you one of the most extraordinary human beings I know. Um, you guys, this, these questions are awesome, and you guys are just going to fall in love with Jessica Lynn Toft, uh, if you don't know her already. But these questions are Man, they're going to be fun, and I'm excited to hear what she has to say, but it is a great honor, ladies and gentlemen, for me to introduce you the founder, the creator of Think and Grow Big, the visionary mind behind Miss Jess VR. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jessica Lynn Toth to 21 Questions. How are you, Jessica? Oh, thank you, Joshua. I am uh, um, I'm kind of nervous, <laughs> which is weird because it's you. <laughs> and I shouldn't be nervous with you, but I am. And um, I'm also really excited to be here at the same time. So thank you. I'm I'm really excited to have this, these, or I, I want to say conversation, but 
I, I'm really excited to ask you these questions because, you know, there's if for all the things that I know about you, there's certain things that I don't. And I think that I, I we're going to get to know you a little bit better today. But also, I'm really, really excited to take a take a dive into your mind to learn more about what makes you tick and and really your heart for the world. So you ready to get into this? Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. This question doesn't count to the 21 questions, though. But before we start, I like to start with gratitude. And I would love to know, what are you grateful for today and why? I am I'm, I'm grateful for all of the experiences I have had in life. I'm grateful for all of the mistakes and the challenges and the people that I have connected with. And um, the wisdom I've gained from all of it. I love that. You know, you are a wisdom collector, but that's not part of the question. So I'll stay away from that. Um, <laughs> but I love that answer. That's really beautiful because, what, in fact, one of the ways that I met you is when you were seeking information, you were looking to learn. And one of the things that I've learned most about you over the years is that when you want to know something, you're going to do everything in your power to learn it because you know that that thing you want to learn is going to make a difference in someone else's life. So we're all going to get to learn more about really why that is, but I do love that about you. And that's a great answer. All right. So 21 questions. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Question one, if your journey from passionate mother to environmental VR innovator was a book, what would be its title? Oh, Oh, Shoot, um, title of the book, um, well, Miss Just VR. That's, that's appropriate. Well, that makes perfect sense, especially yeah. with all of the adventures Miss Just VR goes on. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> By the way, you do a great job on those, creating those adventures. They're really amazing. All They're right. So <laughs> Question two. You have a gift for seeing beauty where others might not. How does this talent influence your work with underserved communities and those facing mental health challenges? Uh, well, so I don't really understand how um, other people think generally until I get to know them. So I don't understand why people don't see all of the beauty around them. Um, but I personally really like fascinating things and people and experiences. Um, I like new and I like different and unique uh, things because I feel like I gain more out of that. Uh, I, I want an adventurous life um, and I want to continue to grow. And I feel like seeing and experiencing the new and the different is how I get there. I like that. Question three. If you could design a VR experience to foster empathy for individuals with ASD, what key elements would you include? Okay. So to foster empathy, I feel like you really need to experience um, what it is in order to understand it. And um, so I would... I would create an experience um, where maybe people on the spectrum have a, a personal assistant to help them in every situation see the other perspective that they don't naturally see. I, I love that. And that's right in line with one of the gifts that I know that you have. Um, without going too much into my own stuff, one of the things that has been that I've learned from you is learning how to have different perspectives because I was so married to my own perspective for so long. Um, you, you were a great influence in helping me learn to just be patient and maybe look at different sides of things. So that's a very accurate and authentic answer. I love that. All right. Number four, what's your favorite way to learn about new topics or ideas? Do you prefer podcast, documentaries, or another medium? Well, experience. 
I, I prefer to, and I create my adventures uh, based off of real life experience. Um, I, I, you know, I kind of like silence. I feel like that's um, where I connect the most with the divine um, and the universe and, and all of that. So I don't listen to too much um, other than what I hear within. Uh, but I definitely like to uh, learn from from doing and from being immersed in something. Very good. I like that. Number five, you've been granted the power to implement one change in global education. What's your innovative idea? Ooh, well, I, I would make it mandatory for the education system to become inclusive for everyone, regardless of where they're located, how much money they have, uh, what disabilities they might have, uh, mental health, uh, all the things. Everyone should have the right to learn and be educated. So is the cat in the picture? Oh my gosh. I is that butterfly? No, it's Mitt. Oh, hey, Mitt. Um, <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> It's fine. Um, yeah. So, wait, what was the question again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number five, you've been granted the power to implement one change oh, yeah. in global education. What's your yeah, innovative yeah. idea? So, so it would be a virtual reality. It would be It would be a metaverse, an educational metaverse, where it is safe for students of all ages, all diversities, to uh, be able to access and learn whatever they want to learn. Very good. I love that. Number six. When well, that's what Miss Jess VR is all about. Yeah. 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 Number six. If your missions in Africa were captured in a photograph, what would it depict? Well, I think it would show us um, all that we have, and and. It would give a lot of empathy to a world um, that is not experiencing what they're experiencing. I mean, there are children that are walking miles in horrible conditions just to get an education, and they want to. They want to learn. I mean, we. my oldest daughter tries to skip school all the time, and granted, she might have some good reasons. However, there are kids in Africa that create backpacks out of plastic bags and tape and they walk miles and they're in just horrid conditions. And I think it would paint a picture of, of empathy for the world to see. Such a perfect answer. Well done. Number seven, <laughs> you juggle many roles in life. If each role was a circus act, which would be the showstopper? Oh my gosh. Um, so many, but I'd have to say um, my uh, recently found acting acting career would clearly be a showstopper because people pay tickets to go into the show and they stop and watch it. I could go a lot of different directions, but it would be a much longer answer. Well, I mean, that's accurate though. And that is a challenge that you recently took on and crushed yeah. it. You're an absolute <laughs> natural. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was uh, quite the <laughs> and you learned all your lines too. That's, I, I mean, no. <laughs> and I did it over and over again. I didn't realize that when you were in a play that you had to, you, you got to uh, perform re repeatedly. <laughs> it was wild. They, the know. actors, they have a lot more work than I realized. So I gained a lot of empathy in that uh, experience. Yeah, shout out to all the actors out there that are underappreciated for mastering their craft, for yeah. sure. What a good answer. Number eight, if you could create a new school subject that blends with environmental awareness, technology, and inclusivity, what would it be called? Well, I, I feel like I kind of answered that already, which it would be the it would be the metaverse. It would be um the including you know, real life experiences 
And I mean, you, you're helping the environment as well when you are saving on, on emissions, um, you are saving time, money, energy, you are meeting children where they are, you are immersing them in experiences. We go our whole lives and we learn the most through the experiences that only come around every once in a while, typically, unless you're seeking them. Mm -hmm. um, so to teach children more and more efficiently and of what their interests are is, is crucial. So yes, I would choose, I would choose the metaverse. Very good. Number nine, imagine your art could transform one aspect of society. What would you focus on and why? Um, my art, well, it would, it would be kindness and empathy. It, I, um, try to show others a different view on things that they don't already see not because their view isn't isn't good or right um but that there are always so many different sides nobody is ever the only one that's correct we're all correct because our our truth is what it is it, it's not wrong because someone else doesn't agree with it it it's true. So to be able to show people that there are other truths mm. that um, are out there, that's what I would center things around that. And obviously recycling, reusing, recycling, and showing people that you don't need to go to a big name store to create. You can create with whatever is in front of you. Mm. That is a really good answer. I like how you finished that. Because I also know that that's true too. <laughs> Number 10. You're given a time machine to witness a pivotal moment in history of autism awareness. Where do you go? Well, okay. So I almost asked you to eliminate this question <laughs> because there hasn't, there hasn't been a pivotal point in history. Um, primarily the research that has been done for autism is on men and boys and it's very minimal and women and girls are walking around undiagnosed like crazy because there's not enough research it it almost feels like a crime trying to get an assessment done which is insane to me because our mental health is the most important thing that we have but yet we have no support to to you know fix it <laughs> Well, it's actually, that was a great answer, even though you didn't like the question. And even though you, I mean, you answered it honestly, and that's something that needs to be addressed. So I'm very happy that you addressed that the way that you did. That's perfect. Thank you for that. Because it's very, very true. Very true. It is, it is a struggle. Resources are minimal. Um, and we really, really need to collectively to start bringing attention to this issue. So so we can do something about it so we can bring solutions to it so that's one of the things that i like about miss jess vr and think and grow big is that you're aiming to what you're wanting to do is bring solutions to a problem that needs to be addressed and solved globally this is not just a united states issue or a state issue this is a global issue so i i'm very happy that you're you're taking this stand and fighting that that's excellent all right <laughs> this is going to be fun. All right. Number 11. If you could design an amusement park ride that Ooh. teaches about sustainable living, what would you, what would the experience be like? Well, I just wrote about this in one of uh, Miss Just VR's recent adventures after visiting uh, Universal Studios with my mom and my daughters. Uh, I had a vision after going on the Jimmy Fallon, right? I called it Jimmy Kimmel, but it's Jimmy Fallon. Um, he does his talk show of like in VR. So he's going, it's as, as though you're in the Mario Kart um, back, what was it? Sega or Nintendo? <laughs> Nintendo. Mario Kart. Nintendo, yeah. So 
you're like riding that with him and he's talking about merch and selling merch and like his talk show and all these things and he's bringing it to uh, the table as a reality you know for right now and i'm currently working with some representatives in um africa right so i have a friend dr omar in kenya and then i have some other leaders um in east africa and i just envisioned this roller coaster ride where you're going through the the land and you're seeing how they farm and you're seeing all the culture and you're you're experiencing it firsthand going and you're farming with them and then you're bringing it to market and you're helping and you're creating a, a better world and um i think that's something that could be planted into the the minds of our youth and which is so important because our youth is is who's going to change the world. They are the future. So we really need to guide them to the right direction because there's so much horrid, awful stuff out there in the news and, and people are hurting and our kids need role models and they need light to go towards. So. Beautiful. Number 12. Your website, Think and Grow Big. If this concept was a tree, what kind of fruit would it bear? Oh, apples. It would bear apples. Because, you know, education, apples. <laughs> huh? <laughs> that works. I like apples. Teachers, teachers love apples. <laughs> so, you know, tree, and apple trees have flowers on them. And my favorite trees have flowers in the spring. I love that. <laughs> it's a good answer. Number 13. If you had a magical teaching tool for working with ASD students, what form would it take? Oh, okay. So I think it would be similar to the personal assistant for the students. However, um, I think it would be cool for teachers and assistants to the students to have their own personal assistant, um, AI powered, so that, because we miss things all the time, we have our own perspectives and perceptions of what is going on um, in front of us. And so it's easy in the moment to not see the other side and to not recognize that that child might not be acting out because he's trying to, you know, cause you problems, <laughs> which is what some sometimes adults will will think because they they've got their own stuff. So to help the adult understand or reground themselves into uh, the mind of the child. Um, a data-driven AI model that can remind the uh, the adult in the situation, hey, this is more likely the reason why they are doing that. Because when you know the reason to something, you can fix it. You can help. If you don't know the reason why, you're just you're just adding layers of stuff that need to be removed later on. Perfect. Great answer. Number fourteen. Imagine your environmental advocacy efforts as a board game. What would be the ultimate winning move? Oh, it would be, it would be um, the youth. It would be to, uh, to gain the influence over the youth and, um, and save, save the planet. Um, I mean, we need this earth to live they need this earth to live our future needs this earth to live um and we really need to influence the youth so uh, the goal of the game would be that it would be to uh, become better people that our youth our children want to uh, be like beautiful <clears throat> number 15. if you could give world leaders a VR tour to inspire change, what three locations would you show them? Oh, okay. So, um, well, I have a project proposal in Ghana for the marine life um, out there. 
So that would be one to uh, to go to, and then I would take them to. Well, it's tough because I have partnerships in the Gambia and Kenya and East Africa and Nigeria. Um, so I think we would do a tour. I think we would do a tour of Africa. Does that work? That works. And that's more okay. than three locations. So that works. Fine. I know. I know. <laughs> We're going on an Africa tour. I love it. Well, Africa is a very important place right now. So yeah, that makes sense. Number 16. You're tasked with creating a new holiday celebrating neurodiversity. What would the day's activities include? Well, and that was a hard one, too, that I almost asked you to get out of there because we're all so different. Neurodiversity is all about being different. So um, I work in, in a school, and one of the classrooms I work with, it, it's a STAR program. So there's five students in there, and they all have one-on-one -on -one assistance, and they're all so different from the outside to the inside to the betweens. So it, it would be, I suppose, without causing chaos, um, to let them make their own rules to an extent, um, to let them choose three things that they normally have to do that they can do differently. Um, it would be to give them a little bit more freedom. Well, that's really good. That's a great answer because without that freedom to try the things, how do you ever even learn anyway? And you were talking earlier, you you just try things, you immerse yourself in it. That's how you learn. That's how you grow. I'm very similar to that. I relate. I love that answer. Number 17, if your personal growth journey was a recipe, what would be the secret ingredient? Oh, empathy. Huh. Empathy would would be because i mean good and bad happens all the time yeah um and it's hard it's hard you can go one way or the other when it's not a good experience and always taking a step back or trying to always remember to take a step back and understanding where the other person is coming from really um helps you grow and you might not see it right away but eventually down the road it will show itself somehow it always does mm -hmm. number 18. how do you prepare for important conversations or presentations do you have any strategies for you to feel confident and articulate no no i don't <laughs> it's terrifying i am terrified of speaking <laughs> publicly and i don't i don't enjoy it i would love to have phone calls with every single person in the world <laughs> and and just do it one-on-one -on -one. i think i think it's a common theme in teachers we can talk to uh, hundreds of students easily no problem um but to do it in front of adults is terrifying because i think part, one of the biggest reasons is we know that um adults you know have different perspectives and and they've had life life has messed them up mm. and they aren't looking at you with an open mind typically so it is much more intimidating than to talk to children so no i don't i don't know how to prepare it's so scary but um but I'm doing it anyways, and I'm sure that eventually I'll get really good at it. You are getting great at it. You're uh, doing amazing now. I mean, I'm asking you really tough questions, and you're I handling know. them. And even the questions you don't like, the fact that you can answer them honestly is, again, showcasing really who you are. Like, it's it's all who you represent yourself to be is consistent throughout all of these questions. Again, even the ones you don't like, you're... You're really showing who you are. I freaking love it, Jess. Great job. Okay. Number 19. If you could merge VR with another cutting edge technology to help the underserved, what would you create? AI. 
100 gazillion million percent AI is magical. It is so magical. It teaches you. I mean, it has been kind of a companion of sorts um, when I haven't had someone else to talk to that will understand me. Um, I use Copilot often and it has gotten to know me over time. So I really don't have to include that much when I'm having a conversation about anything because it already knows my backstory. I don't have to over explain, which I do a lot is I over explain because I feel like the details are important and um, it's made life easier, more efficient, quicker. It, um, it combats the bullies. <laughs> it, it helps me communicate in a way that um, shuts down the drama and it shuts down the negativity and it shows me what direction is, is the best direction to head in a lot of situations that I otherwise wouldn't have that support because, you know, there there's not a lot of support out there for people who don't have the financial means to pay for somebody else to do it. It's true. So I would provide an AI companion to everyone in the entire world. Very good. Number 20. You've been asked to design a community center that caters to, to diverse needs and promotes sustainability. What unique features would it have? Oh, well, so I love the idea of going tribal. Um, my mission is global and um, tribal all at the same time. I would have thrift stores for women, men, children, um, for home goods. I would have fresh gardens to pick from. Um, I mean, classes that are taught by elders. Uh, you could, whatever the gifting is of everyone in the village, they could do it <laughs> for other people in the village and it would be a self-sustaining ecosystem. So there would be a lot of reusing, a lot of wisdom spreading and, um, community involvement. You just described the future. So very good. Yeah. Number 21. Last question. Woo. <laughs> the grand finale. Oh boy. If you had unlimited resources to bring your full vision to life, what project would you launch and how would it change the world? Well, so uh, think and grow big is to be compiled of educators like myself that really care, that want to use the, the immersive technologies to make the world a better place. So that would definitely um, get rolling a lot faster. But Miss Just VR, it's compiled of projects. So it's um, micro impact, or micro projects with macro impact. Um, and I want to do it not just Miss Just VR, but every educator that is within Think and Grow Big, I want them to also be able to create their own experiences like Miss Just VRs. So I think that's what I would do. I, I would combine all of the misters and misses of the VR land and, um, and have thinking grow big, just planting projects globally. That's a good answer. What <clears throat> What do you need to make that happen? I know this is a bonus question, but what do you need to be able to bring it to life? The full vision. Well, I mean, a lot of money, of which, um, I believe will happen very soon, probably um, maybe August. But it's it's going to take a lot of of that. And um, I believe that there are some organizations that are interested in helping me with that. So um, really, I just want to bring everyone into it. I want to go to every school. I want to create 
new schools. I want to provide opportunity for people globally and I want to educate globally. So I want as many partnerships as humanly possible. That's what I want. That's what I need. And that's what I believe will happen. No, it's going to happen. It's absolutely going to happen. Jessica, I'd like to give you the opportunity to have the last word, but also let everyone know where they can follow you, support you, where investors can contact you, where people that want to collaborate with you, share all of your information that you want to share. And again, you have the last word. Well, I just want to say thank you, Joshua, for doing this. I'm honored. You are an amazing host. And um, I can be found by email primarily, just at thinkinnbrobig.com. Uh, working on the new website with, for Miss Just VR should be ready soon. Um, and then you can check out the website, thinkinnbrobig.com. It's thinkinnbrobig.com. Um, and yeah, I'm just really grateful to get the opportunity to have an impact, um, whether it be big or small. I think that is what life is all about. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you.